Thank you for joining the session today, I'm PowerPoint for lecturers. The session is being recorded and will be available on the Department of Technology Enhanced Learning's YouTube channel, where you will find a number of resources to enhance your teaching and learning practice, as well as training delivered by my colleagues here at TEL this week and next. Let's kick off the session with eight great PowerPoint tools that will help you when creating and delivering presentations. And for those of you that have just joined us, you're, you're very welcome. So in this session, I'll cover a few tools that you can use when creating your slides for in-person or online lectures. I find a lot of methods used by lecturers to deliver online content can be translated into the classroom to improve the user experience of students as well as for lectures. So, you know, it's nice to do things that make life a little bit easier for us people who are at the forefront of teaching. The PowerPoint tools that I'm going to share today will help you to improve your efficiency when designing slides, inspire innovative ways for you to present your content and help you enhance your live lectures. I'll guide you through slide masters, inserting videos, recording your presentations, annotating slides in your lectures, live closed captions, compressing images, checking accessibility and slide shortcuts. Now, some of these tools you might be familiar with, some of them you might learn something new about the tool. So the first PowerPoint tool that will help you speed up your design process and lay a good foundation for your slides is Master Slides. I recommend using your institution or company slide masters. I know people are not a fan of branding, especially in academia, because we stubborn. However, when you work with a company brand, people can immediately see where you are from, and it can take a lot of pain out of choosing slide colors and fonts for presentation, and actually help you to create your slide deck a lot more efficiently because the choices have been taken away, which sounds bad, but it just means that you're not focusing on, oh, does this color work? Does this text work? Or things like that. So as you can see, you go down to view, you go down to master and slide master. And that's where you'll be up to select your slide masters. As you work through this presentation, you'll notice that I've left a couple of breadcrumbs. So just, you know, a bit of shortcuts that you can go into. So view, master, slide master. Each of the slides should have something on similar. So if you're working on a template that has been provided to you, you should already have a few layouts to choose from or you can create your own when you've opened your master slide view. Most slide templates will include a few page layout options for you. The first slide of these is where you can select your entire presentation's font. If you change your font here, it will change the font across the entire presentation if you have created your slides with slide masters. For this presentation, our designer has created various colorways for each section of our presentation. Once you've created your slide masters, please make sure you've closed and exited your slide master by clicking on close master. You are all you are then ready to create to add content to each slide. So once you've inserted a new slide, you can then select the design that you want to have applied to the slide or even change your slides layout. Under the home tab, select slides click on layout, and then you can select one of the layouts you have already created on your slide masters. I find this tool saves me a lot of time. As you can see, when I select a different layout, it is automatically updated on the slide. I'm busy designing. It is a very easy way to adapt the various items on the page to suit your content or define sections in your presentation. You might want to use slide masters to update all of your old lecturing slides you've created in the past. As an example, for example, you might have old CRT slides and want to apply the MT logo to them and give your slides a consistent look and feel. If you copy and paste your old slides into a presentation with the slide masters already created, you can then select the lay layout that you want and apply the, it will, this will apply the fonts, background and logos as per the master slide. The next tool is inserting video into your PowerPoint presentations to create a media rich and engaging presentation. This can be found in the top right of your page and you can choose different formats. And there's various ways that you can include video into your PowerPoint presentations from a video browser like YouTube or a file you've pre-recorded on an MP4 file that you have downloaded. The recommended file format to use is MP4. However, if you're working on Windows machine, the options in the gray block on the right are also supported. 
So you'll see AVR files there, MPEGs and wave file, Windows Media files. And if you're working on a Mac machine, the options in the gray block, you can also use them. And again, MP4 files are the ones that are recommended. So click on insert, click on the video icon on the right and select the video file. You would have need to have saved this to your device already. So they have a file already selected. Drop the file in as you would any other picture or anything else. Resize the video by clicking on it and holding down shift to make sure it scales correctly. And then be sure to reference or attribute the video source if you have not created yourself. There are numerous actions you can then add to the playback. Click on the video first. You can play and preview it, add or remove bookmarks, trim the video in PowerPoint, have the volume set a certain level for when it plays, choose when it starts, if the video needs to loop, etc. And under the video format tab, you can adjust things like the brightness, crop the video or add a border around it and even add alt text. The next is to insert a YouTube video. You will need the video link to include before selecting this option. Under insert and in the video icon, select online film, paste the URL to the file and your video will appear. Resize the video and it is ready to be played in your next presentation. As you can see, this provides a good preview of the video. However, you might find that adverts will play, which can be distracting. Another point to highlight is that you will need to have online access. You'll have to have be connected to the Ethernet or Wi-Fi or Edgeroam, heaven forbid. If you have a YouTube premium account, though, I believe you can download the video and insert it into your presentation and then play it without being online. Once you've inserted any video, please remember to choose when and how the video is played back. Um, click, is it on an in-click sequence? Is it on play automatically? Or is it when you click on it um, and someone chooses the playback button? So just to zoom in there. And you also have options to preview the video. Add bookmarks, as I said, a basic trim feature. Add fades, what volume the that it should play, and if it should play in full screen, et cetera. The same as when you insert your own video. If you're including a video that you've recorded, you can insert close captions, and you'll need to add a web VTT file. And I'm not 100% sure what that stands for, but look up web VTT file. One of the shortfalls of including a video in your presentation and that it, is that it will increase the file size of your PowerPoint presentation. So linking to online video files can decrease the file size, but then as I mentioned, you will have to have, to have internet ac uh, access. If you reduce the original video file size, this affects the quality of the video, but will decrease the file size when included in presentations. So I would say if you're sending files to students, perhaps you know, giving them a link to a video instead of sending them entire videos might be a bit of a better option. And then um, at MTU as a lecturer, you have access to various tools to record your lectures ahead of or during a lecture. Zoom can be used to record your live online lectures. However, you can also record them in PowerPoint themselves. Um, and the record button is found to the top right of your screen. When you're designing your slides, you will start cre to create a recording of that slide that you've chosen. So if you click record, that the, whatever slide you're on is gonna be where you start recording. Or if you want more options in the navigation ribbon, you'll see record at the top right, select record, and then choose if you only want to record the current slide from the beginning of the presentation or from, um, you can clear recording and reset things like Cameo. Now, Cameo is when there's a small little picture on the side of yourself. You can film yourself on your own webcam. When you click on record, your slides will go into presenter view. In this case, I have two screens, and this is the view I get of my notes and what slide is coming next. I can also choose to view my notes in a teleprompter view or with preview slides. The video icon at the top of the screen next to the record button is where I can choose if I want to record my face in Cameo view. I've unselected it as it is not necessary to always include this. 
and I don't feel like looking at myself. You can choose your mic, delete slides, and pause your recording here. You also have the option to annotate your slides, so this can come in handy when pre-recording math solutions, and you do this by selecting the pen tool at the bottom of the screen here, and you can change the colors of the pen that you're using. Circling back to the teleprompter view versus presenter view, when you are in teleprompter view, you can increase the size of your text to create more easy, easy to read copy when you're presenting or recording your slides. First, click into the text box and increase or decrease the size of the font. You can use your mouse to then scroll through the text as quickly or as slowly as you like while you're reading. I find this is really nice because then, you know, you can put your camera slightly above your teleprompter view when you're recording for students and that, and it doesn't look like you, you know, you don't have to show your profile. I don't like showing the side of my nose. Um, this is a list of keyboard shortcuts that will come in handy when recording your slides and can be found when you select the record functions. There's a small info button and this will pop up. So it will go to the next hidden slide or end the slideshow by clicking escape. And I suggest familiarizing yourself with these if you're going to start recording yourself. Something to note, when you select record, a cameo of yourself will automatically appear as I showed there. Remember to switch it off at the top of the screen on the Cameo icon. The benefit of using the record function, sorry, I've see, noticed that it's incorrect recording there, but you get the drift. The benefits of using record function in PowerPoint is that you can record per slide. Each slide can have its own recording as you work through your presentation. So this means that you can update your presentation per slide too. You find that if you're sending a presentation or pre-recording to a conference, you can then easily adapt it slightly for sharing with colleagues by adding or removing slides. Um, you can also use portions of your teaching slides to augment students' notes by including pieces that you have recorded if you find that they are struggling with a concept. So you don't have to go and record your entire PowerPoint session. You could maybe have one slide where you are talking about an upcoming assignment and you've used a PowerPoint presentation to discuss that. And there's maybe something that the students keep on asking questions about, then you can just add it as part of the recording into your PowerPoint slides. Another option is to augment learning by recording live, recording a lecture or even portions of it. Then you can save it from PowerPoint as an MP4, then bring it into Canvas in the, and then in the rich content editor, you can add H5P integrations into it. My colleagues here in Intel are delivering training on Canvas and H5P. And at the end of this presentation, I'll share a QR code um, that you can, if you'd like to register for any of these events. And we also have recordings of events that have passed. Um, again, I'll be sending a link out with the TEL resources and help docs that have been created for your use as a lecturer here at MTU. So this is an easily accessible way of creating your own learning objects. Um, sometimes, you know, you might not have a great grasp on something like ScreenPal, but you feel very comfortable in PowerPoint. It's just about making, you know, teaching more accessible to lecturers, giving them different ways to create their own content. And a tip is to keep videos short and maybe stick to one main teaching objective or consider creating learning objects that you can share across a variety of modules or courses. So, you know, give yourself a fair chance. You don't have to do it for everything. Maybe do it just for one or two things. And then next year, you've got that one or two things and you can add to it. Um, if you're doing this, if you're adding integrations into um, H5P interactions, in video, you can then add a timestamp. You can add a knowledge check. You can add feedback to your knowledge checks. Or you can add all of the above, all just from recording something that you've been doing in PowerPoint. The next feature that I'll be going through is annotations. And this can be found where you are now in presenter view. It's the bottom left, and it's a little pen tool. Annotations are drawn onto your slides during your live presentation, and they can be recorded too when you're doing your recordings through PowerPoint. In your lecture, you have an option to use PowerPoint as a whiteboard in your class. Um, that's just the way that I see it, view it if you're doing annotations. So whether you are delivering your lecture online or in the classroom, you might find it more efficient to not have to move between slides and a whiteboard or any other program. 
The image on the right is a pen or drawing tablet. You could use maybe a Wacom pad or even a tablet with a stylus pen, an iPad to draw on your slides with the pen function. Each will require a different way to connect and this can be found by doing search online for instructions. One thing that I will say before going out and purchasing something like a pen or drawing tablet, please check for compatibility with PowerPoint. I did a quick online search and I see some of them you can get for as little as 30 euros. And I think, you know, that might just be something that's easy and accessible to more lecturing staff than, you know, maybe having a an iPad, which are, can be expensive. Um, so Professor, Assistant Professor, Syed Nabi at the University of Glasgow uses his tablet this way by first creating a template slide um, and he then annotates them in class. This can be done in your lecture venues as well as in online classes. So you can walk around your class and start drawing on your slides. You can choose to save the annotations or delete them and in PowerPoint recording. And to augment your students' learning, you can potentially explain formulas students are struggling with by annotating your slide and talking them through it um, in this way, you're not switching between whiteboards and screens and different programs. It's all in one place and accessible after class. So when you go into slide view, the pen tool is available at the bottom left of the preview screen. And I've zoomed in a bit with this recording so you can see a little bit more clearly. Click on the pen tool. You can select the color of your pen or if you want a highlighter or simply a laser pointer and then annotate your slide. In this instance, the lecturer will be answering a question to the slide live in class. When you leave your presentation, you'll be asked if you would like to keep the annotations or not. If you want to save them, say yes. And if you don't, you'll lose all of your annotations. So this is where version management is important. So maybe, you know, like live class, January 25, and then save that version of it and have one version where you don't have annotations, your master slide. So I hope this has given you a few ideas of how you can use PowerPoint beyond being deaf by PowerPoint and create a more interactive lecture or possibly create your own learning objects just in a simple program like PowerPoint. So the next tool in PowerPoint is the ability to create closed captions. Closed captions being text that is generated automatically while you speak during a live presentation. As long as you're close to your device's microphone, you'll be able to generate live closed captions. You can add live closed captions to your presentations in presenter mode. Click on the CC icon on the bottom left of the page to activate live closed captions or switch it off again. This will allow students to follow your lecture. Ahead suggests using closed captions when presenting to a group of diverse needs, such as English as a second language, hard of hearing, or if you have dyslexic students in your class. And it may help the group to engage in the content of the presentation. Appearance settings are available, which allow you to decide where the subtitles or closed captions appear in your navigation ribbon. Select Slideshow tab. Under Subtitle Settings, you will be able to select your language of choice, which microphone you want the subtitles to follow, and where the captions need to appear. You know, you might be wearing a lapel mic in a live venue, and you don't want, you know, a mic where students are, are responding to things um, to capture what's being said. So you can choose exactly what mark you want to use. And then um, you can also choose to always use subtitles or to switch them off. If you se select system caption preferences, you can control the look of the subtitles and check or uncheck the options for subtitles for hard of hearing, SDH, which means that they'll capture text descriptions of sounds as well as the subtitles. So subtitles assume that the viewer can hear the audio. Um, but isn't familiar with the spoken language. SDH makes content accessible to deaf and hard of hearing individuals. And then another tip when creating your slides is to compress your images, which will decrease the overall size of your presentation. And this is done in PowerPoint so that there's no need to jump between programs. So here in this example, there's an original quality of the image. To compress it, um, select the picture format and click on Compress Pictures. Um, I usually go with 150 PPI, as then things are still crisp and clear in my presentations. You can also choose to compress all images in the presentation or select only one image. 
I generally choose per image to make sure that I'm not using image quality on images that might need to be crisp detail with, you know, details like technical drawings or text. Um, but if you're looking at, you know, like an organic picture, you can go down to 96 DPI and that shouldn't be a problem. To just show you the slight difference in a non-technical photograph, this is 220 PPI, 150 PPI. Changes to the resolution don't really make that much of a difference. Um, and then down to 96, there's only a slight difference when the image is that low. But as I said, I recommend sticking to 150 PPI for anything that is text or more detail on it. And so as a lecturer, it's always good to check accessibility when compiling a slide deck. If you start doing this as a standard practice, it'll become second nature. So TAL have created a few recordings on creating accessible teaching content, as well as a few help docs, and I'll share a link to this at the end of the session. Under review in the ribbon, click on the accessibility icon and select check accessibility. This will then highlight ways you can improve accessibility in your presentation. I actually find this tool extremely user friendly um, because it does give you suggestions and it will show you exactly where, you know, you can click on exactly where the where you need to make changes to your presentation. And the last at number eight are a few slide show shortcuts. So you can make your screen white if you just need to, you know, stop from your presentation at some point. You can make it black. Now you can choose things like your pen tool, your laser pointer, and just familiarize yourself with a couple of shortcuts that when you are doing presentations in class, you can, you know, it's just more efficient that you know these shortcuts. Unfortunately, today I'm working on a PC and I normally work on a Mac. So I'm, I'm finding that navigating is a little bit tricky. So on that note, if you would like to know more about design principles, so how to design slides um, and how to lay things out on your page, please view our previously recorded session in YouTube. Um, I'll be sharing links with you at the end of this presentation. Um, feel free to scan the QR code and email it to yourself for future reference. I find sometimes when I'm in conferences, there's already so many, there's so many QR codes, but if I just email it to myself, then I've got it there and I know exactly what the QR code is for and what the link is for. And then here at MTU, we all want to improve the student experience, but also the experience of lecturers. So TAL have created a number of on-demand resources. If you need guidance and support using any of our digital learning tools. Um, so again, feel free to, share, to, to scan the QR code or I'll be sending links to all of these resources. And thank you for joining me. Uh, please feel free to add any questions in the Q&A and I'll try and answer them as best I can. I know it's a tricky time of ter term to join us. And just one last comment. If you found value in this session, I would like to invite you to sessions being offered by TEL over the next two weeks and to help you navigate the teaching technology landscape at MTU. Sessions will be doubled up and recorded. So hopefully you'll find a gap in your working week Register for as many sessions as you like by scanning the QR code or visit the link I have, and I'll share those in the chat or search online for MTU TAL upcoming training and you'll see, you know, annually we have a couple of training sessions. And thanks again, everyone for attending um, and happy lecturing. <laughs>